Hi everyone, we're going to um, continue on with electron configuration and we're going to break this into uh, three short videos. One of them is going to be on how to write full notation for electron configuration, so basically how to write electron configuration. And the next one will be on core notation, which is a much um, simpler and more efficient way to write electron configuration. And finally, we're going to look at the exception to the rules. There is a couple of exceptions that we need to be aware of, otherwise we'll have, uh, for some elements, we might get the wrong electron configuration. So if you joined us in the last lesson, we labeled our periodic table with the different energy levels and the specific orbitals. So if you haven't done this or you didn't watch the video prior to this, please pause this, get out your data booklet, and make sure that you label your periodic table um, so that you're really clear about where uh, where the electrons will live in each of the different orbitals. So 1s, 2s, going down to 7s, um, or 2p through down to 7p, occupying um, over here on the non-metal section, uh, and some of the, uh, the metalloids and metals as well. The transition metals um, are, are d orbitals, and starting with 3d, Okay, all the way down to 60, and then finally the 4 and the 5f um, orbitals are down at the bottom here. So please do make sure you have this labeled, or you can refer to page 155 in your Hebden textbook, which has a nice chart, but it doesn't actually show the elements specifically. So this is a really uh, useful thing to do to label your periodic table. Okay, let's start. Electron configuration is a way to show where the electrons live in an atom. It's a description of the, of the electrons. It shows which orbitals contain electrons for that atom, and then how many electrons are in each orbital. There are two rules that we're going to use when we start writing out electron configuration. Uh, the first rule, which just is very common sense and makes sense to us, is that we're going to start at the lowest energy orbitals and we're going to work our way up. So we don't randomly um, assign electrons to an orbital. We start at the very bottom with the 1s orbital and we fill them as we go until we've reached the number of electrons that ha that atom has. The second rule is that each orbital can have a maximum of two electrons. But let's just remember what I'm talking about when I say orbitals here. So remember that an orbital, okay, is a region of space uh, in which electrons can occupy. And so the s orbitals, there is only one orbital for any of the s orbitals, which means you can have a total of two electrons max in the s orbitals. p contains three orbitals. So that means that if it were to be full, there can be a total of six electrons in a p orbital. And that's the maximum. D, oops, d orbitals contain five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so we can have a maximum of ten electrons is the maximum number of electrons that can fill a d, the d orbitals. And finally, F, there are seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so we can have, if each orbital contains two electrons maximum, then a full set of F orbitals would contain 14 electrons at its at the maximum. So if we were to say for, for a, a shell to be, um, to be full, it must have uh, this many electrons in it. Okay. In other words, we can't have more than this number of electrons in 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 a given orbital. So let's go ahead and learn about full notation. So what is it? Um, so we've labeled our periodic table, and we're going to start with some simple examples. We're not going to get into atoms that are lower in our periodic table that have a very high atomic number. We want to stick with some atoms that don't have that many electrons just to get us going. So let's go ahead and start with a couple of really simple examples. So I, th I mean the easiest one to start with here would be hydrogen. So if I look at hydrogen on the periodic table, it has one electron. And I, from a periodic table which I've already labeled, I can see that that one electron would live in the 1s orbital. So I would write that 
for hydrogen as 1 s 1. And that little 1 right there, oh sorry, <laughs> that little 1 right there tells me that there is one electron in the 1 s orbital. So that is the notation, full notation, for a neutral atom of hydrogen. Notice that I've said neutral atom here. That's because I'm not going to deal with any ions yet. Once we understand how to write nota full notation and core notation, we can move on and look at ions, which are really simple. It's, they're just an extension of, um, of what we're learning here. Let's do another example. Let's go to our periodic table and pick something with a few more electrons. Let's pick something like beryllium. Beryllium, if I look at it on the periodic table, it has four electrons in total. And so I can go ahead and fill its orbitals. So working from left to right, remember that we're going to start at the lowest energy level. So because beryllium has four electrons, that means that it has a full 1s orbital. In other words, uh, the 1s uh, orbital or one, the 1s shell would be closed. Closed means that it, all of the electrons have filled it and it's closed for further filling. So we would say that if we count from left to right, starting with 1s here, it has 1, 2, okay, it has the equivalent electrons as a helium atom plus two more. So we could say that it has 1s, 2, 2s, 1, 2. So in total it has four electrons and we can count from left to right there. So the 1s orbital is full with two electrons. That takes us as far as helium in our periodic table. And then the 2s orbital is full for beryllium. So we can essentially, if we're looking at um, any single element in our periodic table, we can go ahead and find it and then literally just fill the electrons up counting from left to right across the rows. Okay, let's move over here and let's do fluorine which has nine electrons and again we don't have to always memorize the order in which to fill it, we can look right off our periodic table. So if we have nine electrons, okay, then we're going to start up here. The 1s has one two electrons in it and then 2s has one two electrons in it. It is full and then over here on the right hand side we're in the 2p orbitals. So the 2p orbitals have one, two, three, four, five electrons in it. It is just one electron short of a closed 2p orbital. So we can go ahead and write the electron configuration for a neutral atom of fluorine and it looks like this. It would be 1s, 2, 2s, 2, and finally 2p, 5. And if I add all those electrons up, 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 5. It has a total of 9 electrons in total. Let's do one last example here. Um, let's go ahead and uh, pick something a little bit lower down uh, that maybe gets into our d orbitals here. So let's go ahead and, and do uh, titanium. Here's titanium, 22 electrons. Okay, and again we can start from the top and work our way across. So titanium is in the 3d, uh, has electrons in the 3d orbitals. So if we start up here, with 1s1, we can count across. So it goes 1s1, 1s2. 2s1, 2 is full, and the 2p orbitals are full as well. 3s1, 2, and the 3p orbitals are full as well. So six electrons there. And then 4s is full, 1, 2, and the 3d has 1, 2 electrons in its orbitals. So we can go ahead and write that electron configuration. So for titanium, the 
1s is full, so it has two electrons. 2s is full and closed, it has two electrons. 2p is full, it has six electrons. Then we moved over to the 3s, which was full. The 3p was also full. Then we moved to the 4s, which was full. And then the 3d comes next, after the 4s, and it had two electrons in it. And if we count those up, that should give us the same number of electrons uh, in a neutral atom of titanium. Let's double check. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18, 20, 22. So for a total of 22 electrons. And that's a really great way to double check that you have written, you haven't missed anything when you've written the electron configuration. All of the electrons that you've written up here remember those are your electrons in each orbital, should add up in total to the number of electrons in that atom. Let's do one last one together. I'm going to choose a, an element that actually does have quite a few electrons. I'm going to choose Krypton from our periodic table. So if we go ahead and find Krypton, it's down here, it's in the noble gas family and it has 36 electrons, quite a few. So now we're getting better at this, let's go ahead and, and count from left to right and think about the different shells that would be full. So starting with 1s here, I've got 1s2 would be full, 2s2 would be full, the 2p orbitals would be full, 3s is full, 3p full with 6 electrons, 4s is full, all of the 3d orbitals are full with 10 electrons in total, and then in the 4p orbitals, again, we're all the way to the very end, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so the 4p has a, um, ha is full, the 4p orbitals are, are full. So let's go ahead and write out the electron configuration for that, for a krypton atom. So we're starting with 1, 1s full, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, this time for krypton 3d is full so it has 10 electrons and then we're moving into the 4p orbitals and they are full with 6 electrons. This, uh, this element here then, krypton being a noble gas, because it has um, all of its electron um, uh, electron shells are, are closed or full, we would say that it is a very stable atom, and which is true of all the noble gases. This is one of the reasons why it's unreactive, is that its outer electrons um, are, are full. The shells are full and they can't accept any more electrons. Because they're full, they don't want to give up any electrons either, so they're unreactive as a result. Now, one of the things you might notice is that as we start to get into some of the elements with more electrons, this process of writing out every single orbital that's full is going to start to get really long um, and a little bit labor intensive. So we actually have a faster way to write out electron configuration for elements that have um, many electrons, and that's called core notation. So we're going to learn that next. But first, let's practice with a few um, simple examples uh, in the pra uh, practice questions following this lesson.